An Egyptian doctor named Mahmoud Fatala said, women are not dying because of illnesses we cannot treat. Women are dying because society has yet to decide that their lives are worth saving. I want to talk to you about a subject that many of you may find uncomfortable, but a subject that certainly has affected someone that you love, whether you know it or not. Approximately half of the 42 million abortions that happen every year happen in illegal settings. These laws have absolutely no control over whether or not abortions happen. The only thing these laws can control is whether or not they happen safely, and they don't happen safely especially in the countries where they're illegal, which is, as you can see, most of the global south. Once every eight minutes, a woman dies from complications due to unsafe abortion. This is approximately a plane crash a day. Consequently, there is and always has been an underground network of providers, of mothers and sisters and healers and whispered information that have helped women access safer alternatives to unsafe ways to end unwanted pregnancies. 20 years ago, m women discovered medical abortion for themselves. The story says that it happened here in Brazil, when women read the contraindications on a, medical, uh, a medicine called misoprostol. And the contraindications said not to take it if they were pregnant because it would cause miscarriage. So they started to use the pills to induce miscarriage for unwanted pregnancies. Physically, it was the same experience and the same health risk as a normal miscarriage, which happens in approximately 15 to 20 percent of pregnancies anyway. And um, as the regimen evolved over time, it became more consistent than traditional methods. They didn't need the assistance of a black market doctor, and if taken sublingually, meaning under the tongue, nobody could trace the miscarriages to the pills. So uh, since then, it, the pill misoprostol has been researched and sanctioned by the World Health Organization as an essential medicine uh, both for the original indication of anti-gastric ulcer medication, which is why it was on the shelves in the first place, and for medical abortion. And, as it turns out, it's a miracle drug for curbing postpartum hemorrhage, which is the number one cause of maternal mortality. So, in a lot of the countries where abortion is still criminalized, th these drugs are available, and they're available over the counter for an affordable price, some, uh, very often without a prescription necessary. Women just don't know to ask for them. So, I'm a filmmaker, and uh, I'm working on a documentary film entitled Vessel, and it's about an or, uh, international organization called Women on Waves, who have found a legal loophole from which they can use a radical means to help women know about these pills. Women on Waves sails a ship around the world to countries where abortion is illegal, and they work with local organizations to transport women 12 miles offshore into international waters, where they can give abortions at sea. This works because um, in offshore waters, jurisdiction over a ship lies with the country, the flagship country of the ship. So in the Netherlands, abortion is legal. Thus, on a Dutch ship in international waters, abortion is legal. And the goal is to create a spectacle that the media reports um, so that people see pictures of the ship, and you can see, you can sort of see in that picture on the right, that there's a um, hotline, a, a telephone number on a banner on the ship, and that's their hotline. So I'm going to show you uh, a quick scene from Vessel, a work in progress, that shows the founder of Women on Waves, Rebecca Gompertz, and her crew arriving in Valencia, Spain, that I shot last year. Very bizarre thing going on. It's a Dutch pro-abortion group. Uh -huh that has put together an abortion clinic on board a boat. Yes, this is all part of the Women on Waves Foundation. The abortion virus. <laughs>
The ship is unsustainable. It can only help a few women at a time, but the media covers it, and hundreds of women see the hotline in the newspapers and, and call it, where they, receive, where they reach trained volunteers who teach them how to find these pills and how to safely take them in the privacy of their own home, without the need of a doctor, without, without persecution, and what to do in the rare cases of complications. Now, if a woman calling in doesn't have access to the pills because they've been deregistered or for whatever reason, they are redirected, this woman is redirected to a sister organization called Women on Web, which is an online organization that works under its own set of legal loopholes and a harm reduction model and will mail the pills to women wherever they are. And Women on Web receives thousands of inquiries every year, including hundreds from Brazil. So, Vessel, the film, is um, in post-production right now, and it should be finished next year uh, at some point. I hope you get a chance to see it. Keep an eye out. Um, but as I've been reviewing footage, I've been realizing that the film is more than just a story. It's also a tool. Uh, scenes that have been shot in Spanish, in Portuguese, in Urdu, in Swahili, uh, in a variety of languages, demonstrate volunteers, non-medical professionals, learning and training others in these very simple regimens and how to take my suprostol. And um, we're repackaging them into two to three minute segments that can be shared via the internet and via text message in grassroots efforts to share this information with women. This is information that's already online. It's online on World Health Organization publications and reproductive rights publications. It's also, for example, on the Women on Web webpage this right here in Portuguese is the entire regimen, and it's published on their website in a variety of different languages, and people are encouraged to visit this website and print it out on, in sticker form and put it up in public places. So these technologies are, like offshore waters, areas of negotiable sovereignty. They are not the long-term solution, but they are ways to radically generate the discussion that could expose the taboo and perhaps lead to the long-term solution. Because regardless of when you believe life begins, perhaps we can all agree that a woman who's determined to end an unwanted pregnancy, who could be you or your sister or your daughter, is herself indeed indisputably alive. And these pills and a little innovation could help keep her that way until the law catches up with reality. Thank you.